Hi, Dan. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. You had a tight four-setter. Can you talk us through the match? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think Cam played the, all the tennis, really. Uh, yeah, I, I fought hard and that, that was about it, really. Um, yeah, it was a difficult turnaround and um, that was that, yeah. iNews UK, James Gray, go ahead. Hi, Dan. Uh, commiserations. Uh, I, uh, I heard you talking about Gavin McCann uh, to your box. Do I take it that you were feeling it in the legs a bit today? Yeah, you got the joke. Uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I, I, I just found it tough to, 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 um, to come back. It was a bit, you know, flat. Uh, and, yeah, I just felt, you know, after... After I won on the net, the uh, Sunday, I just felt pretty flat ever since. Really, you know, I didn't practice great yesterday. Um, yeah, it was it was difficult. It was, you know, it's no um, maybe mentally as well. It was difficult to just, you know, I tried as hard as I could to let let that go. Um, but it, it was difficult, you know. That I would say, you know, probably one of the better draws out there today so yeah metro.co.uk george go ahead with your question i don't so would you say it was more a mental or a physical flatness or a bit of both today i think when you're flat mentally you it it pays off on you physically you know i wasn't very energetic started very slowly you know i, I prepared as as well as i could but you know I could feel myself talking a lot and it was it was tough to get out of you know it was I was definitely probably tired mentally and then you know all, I I did a good job to to hang in the match you know um but just yeah I mean this is sort of exactly the reason I told you guys I wouldn't play the week before the grand slams was to try and conserve my body and it's you know it's happened again obviously the circumstances you know have, have dictated that but you know he's lost first round last week got a shed loads of practice in this week and then probably come you know could dictate his own days and I didn't get you know I didn't get that chance granted I won last week but you know I doesn't feel that good now so yeah it's uh it's a bit bittersweet, really, you know. Like I want to do well in the in the Grand Slams, and due respect to that tournament, you know, no one's going to remember I won that like in three weeks' time. So, um, yeah, it's difficult to swallow, but you know, it's is what it is now. Just you know, I've had had worse, so just move on. Michael from the Daily Mail, go ahead. Uh, Dan, do you, do you feel I've listened? This being an unusual build up. Uh, to this event and the, the circumstances you were faced with of having had a sort of late finish last, well, just 48 hours ago, do you think it, it would have helped if you'd had a sort of backup team here with you? I mean, obviously, you kind of, I think you're just here with your girlfriend, if I'm right in saying, and a, and a mate of yours who's come over. Would it, would it have helped if you'd kind of had a, a bit more support around? I mean, I can't, again, like, it, I can't dictate that, you know. It was never going to ask a guy to come be physio and sit in the room for 14 days along with then just a coach coming out with me. You know, I tried my best to, to have a coach here, but that didn't work. Um, no, I mean... The, the ATP guys do a great job and the Australian Open physios did, did a great job. They, you know, worked on me, looked after me. Um, you know, the, the, the medical services on the tour are great, but, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think so. You know, I, I just didn't... It's an awkward match for me, you know, like playing Cam, he hits the ball, you know, not not the, the nicest to play against. It's It's awkward and... You know, if you look at it, it's probably the match I probably don't want to play is him. There's added, 
you know, added pressure to, to, to win that match. And it's it just wasn't an easy match, you know. To be honest, I thought he played pretty well. Um, yeah, I, well done to him. I mean, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'd say I did well to to make it that that tight. Paul from the Independent, go ahead with your question. <clears throat> Dan, can you tell us what you'll be doing in in the next few weeks? Where where you'll be playing? I mean, I'm entered in Singapore. Um, so I see see how it goes. You know, I need to need to have a look at what. There's so many variables now. I need to check stuff. I need to speak to probably the doctor at the LTA. I, I'm in doubles here, but I'm not sure what how like my partner is or how I am. So, you know, maybe take a few days here if I didn't play doubles, or you know. If, Maybe a week, then get back, you know, four or five days, get back practicing indoors here. Um, but I don't know. It's uh, it, it's it's tough, you know. Like, there's also like, do I want to go to Singapore and then, you know, the points are great, but the money's awful, you know. And then you've sort of, you've got you've got a you know, prioritise tournaments now. I think, you know, Dubai, I've got to look at making sure I'm ready for that. Rotterdam, that's a 500. You know, all sorts come into it now. And if I did play Singapore, then I'm going straight from Singapore to Rotterdam, not going home. It's, But then I might not be able to go home anyway because don't know the circumstances, how I get out of the country, if I can get out of the country. So it's, yeah, it's, a, it's an awful answer for you, basically. I don't know. So you, you you said you said maybe speak to a doctor at the LTA. Have you got any particular um, physical issues at the moment? No, no. But the the doctor would would uh, would have all the information at hand. Where whereas you know I wouldn't I wouldn't have I, I could find the information. But obviously, as an elite athlete, I have certain exemptions. So to go back into the country, I I'd probably need a test. But then isolate with just one extra test. So. And then I can use the bubble at the NTC, but I don't know if that still stands, etc. So we'll see. So Robert from the Sun, go ahead with your question. Dan, on the coaching front, um, when do you anticipate having someone in charge? Have you spoken to some shortlists? Have you got some people in mind potentially? Uh, I mean, uh, to be honest, I really liked Ben Ben Harren, who I worked with in. Over preseason, he did a you know a great job. Um, yeah, there's there's a few things which need shoring up. That that's there's no doubt there. Um, you know, physical trainer as well would, you know, I need to sort that. Um, yeah, it, there's a few things, but nothing. As as you guys know, you know, it's it's difficult at the minute to to really have you know, set plans because you can go to the tournament, you're only allowed two guests, so it's it's so difficult and you know, obviously travel with Alia every week, so that leaves a coach. Does it leave a physio? You know, it, it's very it's it's a difficult time, you know, right now. So I I do need to sort a few things up. Russell from the BBC, go ahead. And just on the financial side of things, Dan, when you said for example, Singapore, the money's not great. Is that becoming quite a factor now for players, given the, the expenses of travelling on tour, that the financial rewards are, are making you have to think twice about your schedule? Well, yeah, I mean, that's just, you know, that that's just like anything if, I don't know. I wonder if it's got worse this year because the price yeah, has come down for obvious of reasons. Of course, but, you know, you obviously know Doha would would be would pay pretty good. Rotterdam obviously is a 500 is better pay. Dubai. So it's, that's just, that would just be silly if I didn't prioritize really, you know, I think it's not, you know, it's no, no disrespect to Singapore or Doha or whatnot, but 500 is great points and bet better money, you know, that, there's not a lot of money around at the minute, so it's, it'd be it'd be stupid not to, 
not to prioritise. And that's why, you know, last week, I don't play the sport for the money, but this is where the money is. And it's the first round. So we've got time for one more question. Robert, go ahead. Just a cheeky, uh, cheeky question, Dan, but on Gavin McCann, I mean, do you know the guy? Have you Did you watch him playing football? I mean, the poor guy, he probably thought he, played, he got an England cap, to be fair to him. No, he's a good foot. I was only joking. I mean, it's just it's just a joke with with friends, you know. Um, no, he's a good football. He played for Villa, but it's, it was just a joke, really. Yeah. I think at the end of his career, like everybody does, they they stop because they lose their legs. Most people, but it's just a joke. I mean, nothing against him. Did well for Villa. Well, thank you so much. That concludes the interview today. Thank you. 